I'm going to share with you a little story of something that I'm very familiar with. When I first came back to Michigan from Virginia, I never wanted to come back to the state because of all the snow. All of the snow. Never wanted to come back to it. <laughs> you never wanted to come back to that. <laughs> but I did. My mother got sick. My father had passed away. And it was time to take care of her. So I did. And I got a car. When I got back home, it was not running too well. And I was so afraid of it that I used to pray before I would take off in the car. Behind the wheel, I'd pray the Lord would take care of me, get the car where I need to go, have a breakdown in the driveway, or in front of the place I need to be fixed. All the time. Now here's the funny thing, I didn't know much about cars back then, at all. And for over a year, I drove this vehicle back and forth to the places I need to go. And it ran pretty good. Then I decided, well, now that I got a little extra money, let me get a tune up. Because I haven't had a tune up on this car, and you know, since I've owned it. And let me get a tune up. So I called my sister, asked her if her boyfriend, who was a, tree, a she, shade tree mechanic, if he would go ahead and, you know, do a uh, tune up for me for a very cheap. He said he would. So I brought the car over to my sister's house, parked it in the backyard by a tree, and he came out to work on it. He uh, popped the hood and he did some stuff and he goes, hey, did you do anything to this engine when you brought it here? No, why? It's missing a part. I'm like, well, what part is it missing? I'm thinking, oh no, I can't afford a lot of money. This is supposed to be cheap. He says, missing a rotor. I said, what the heck's a rotor? So it goes in the distributor cap and tells the car when to fire to the spark plugs. I'm like, okay, how much is that? Well, it's only a few dollars. It's okay. But you drove it over here, right? You didn't have it towed. I said, no, I drove it. And you didn't do anything. No, why would I do anything? I don't know how to do all that stuff. So he goes, wait, just a second. I put the thing back together. He said, uh, start the car. I did. He shook his head. Shut the engine off. So he, he disassembled it, looked inside the distributor cap, felt inside of it, did all sorts of fun stuff. And he goes, this is impossible. I said, well, what are you talking about? He goes, let me look under the car. So he looked. And then he went and put it back together. He said, start the car. I did. Shut it off. Start the car. I did. And shut it off. I'm getting kind of aggravated. I'm like, what is wrong? He said, it's impossible. The car is starting without a rotor, and that's impossible. Well, I don't know this stuff. So a couple of his mechanic buddies came over, and he said, look at this. And he showed them, and had me start the car a couple of times. And he was like, they're all shaking their head. He said, there's no way. So he put it together, and he said, listen, we're just going to go ahead and have you get a rotor, even though it doesn't seem to need it for some strange reason. And, uh, and it should, because it shouldn't start without one. We're going to have you go to the uh, parts store and get one. So I did. I asked the guy behind the counter when I got the part. I said, uh, "Hey, does my car need a rotor to, to, you know, to run?" He said, "Yeah, without a rotor, you can't get the spark sent to the spark plug, so you can't run the car at all." I said, "Well, mine doesn't have one," and uh, they sent me one to get one. He goes, "That's impossible." I said, "You want to look at it?" It's out here in the dry in the uh, parking lot. And I was hoping he'd look at it. <laughs> he didn't. So I went back and they put the rotor in the car and it started the car and it ran just like it always did. And I said to him, he goes, you know, that just tells me that it pays to pray about going out in your car and driving wherever. Well, through the years, I have continued that practice of praying before I take off. <laughs> Look at this back windshield. Through the years, I have prayed. And God has always answered my prayers. The car either breaks down in the driveway or I can get it home to the driveway or it breaks down where it needs to be fixed. And God has always seen me through. Even in the worst of temperatures. I think one day it was like negative 60 or something like that, the wind, and it was a really, really bad day. And, and my car at the time uh, froze while I was driving it and stopped, not on the highway, but on the major side road I had to take to check on my mom. 
someone pulled up behind me and she pulled a gun on me, me and my friend, and then a cop pulled up behind her and we darted out of the car <laughs> and told him what was going on. He said, we're going to get you to safety and I'll deal with her. And uh, I've always had no problems. Even when that uh, tire fell off my car, on the car, still under the car, and I didn't know about too much about it because I just heard a pop, I was still able to get in the driveway. Every time I'm able to get in the driveway or where it needs to be worked on. And every time God takes care of me. My point is, there's nothing too small to take to God. There's nothing too great that you can't take to God. Make sure all your prayer hindrances are taken care of. Make sure you forgive anybody you can and asking God to help you for those you can't. Take things to God in prayer. You will see miracles that are impossible out of God's mercy and love and compassion for you. He will teach you about himself. Prayer is important. Contrary to what my seminary thought, prayer is important. So continue to take get things to God in prayer. Ask in Jesus' name. And always, 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 afterwards, have a moment of respect and silence and listen for God to answer. Always. Have a blessed day. And remember, God loves you. He wants a personal relationship with you. Talk to him.